Iron Man 2. With something like this, it's of course important to know if the reviewer, that would be me, is a fan of the material, and, well, after I watched the first one, I went and bought the video game and the two-disc Ultimate Edition. So yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I certainly am of the movie incarnations. I haven't read that much Iron Man in the comics, but it's not really been that I've been avoiding stories about him. It just... those really weren't the ones I picked up for whatever reason. And I've quite liked a lot of what I've read about him. If you're mainly hoping for a very enjoyable time at the movies, and you like the first one, then you're probably gonna enjoy this one. I was immensely entertained. With both of these movies, they left me in a kind of euphoric state, and not until I came out of that state did I realize that they weren't complete perfect masterpieces. That is to say, the first one lacks a little bit, but it's a very fun movie and holds up rather well. This one, there are some things that are missing. First, I'm gonna cover the really good stuff. Yes, this is bigger. There's more action, there's more of a villain presence. One of the few bothersome points about the first one was the kind of lack of villain screen time. This one, one of the very first things you see is the villain and very shortly after you first see him, you see him start to make his weapon. There's more action. I would perhaps say it's maybe not long, sustained fights. It's maybe more chasing and then some fighting. Basically, in that regard, it is kind of like the first one. Not long, drawn-out fights like Spider-Man or the X-Men movies. More short bouts. What's really great is this has much more suit-on-suit -suit action, and the action does last longer. It also gets a little showy at times, but not terribly much. You tend to feel like you're part of the action, similar to the first one. In the first one, it was especially with the flying. They try to do that with the flying in this one, but it doesn't feel quite as stunning. Not entirely. The effects are, again, completely convincing, photorealistic CGI. It does get a little bit indulgent here and there, but that remains the exception. Also, yes, this has all the action that you see in the trailer, and more. And yes, Nick Fury and the Black Widow are in this. Jackson is excellent. He brings the usual level of intensity to the role. Scarlet is steamy. She's a real femme fatale. She gets to do some really awesome fighting, though a little bit of it looks a tad awkward. I think it might have been the angles or something. And if you think that skin-tight cat suits can't possibly look any hotter, then you need to see Scarlet and hers. However, neither of them are really used for anything. And that brings us to the bad. There is very little development in this movie, for both plot and characters. I mean, on the whole, it doesn't move that much further from where the first one left off. I mean, we're talking two hours of movie, several main characters, a couple of them new ones, and very little fleshing out or development. I've heard some say that there's too much dialogue, and yeah, maybe. I also personally think that Rockwell went off a little too much. I don't know, is it just me or do a lot of these American films have at least one just, you know, token weird character? And he's just a little too dorky and awkward. With that said, almost every line that's meant to be is really funny and sharp. It's well delivered and a lot of it feels very natural, like in the first one. This doesn't really build that much tension. There really isn't that much of a sense of danger, even though it really tries for it several times. 
it occurs that characters' actions don't really make sense. The score stays very much in the background. I mean, in the first one, I was constantly, you know, listening to it and just going with it. In this one, there were maybe three or four instances where I noticed it and liked it. I'll admit that. But apart from that, I didn't realize it was there. This is a little too much of just a setup for partially the third one and partially the Avengers film. With that said, the acting's pretty great. I like Don Cheadle as Terrence Howard playing Rote. All in all, for its shortcomings, I really did enjoy this movie. And if you liked the first one, you probably will too. It's lacking the constant energy of the first one, and it largely feels kind of directionless. But it is fun. The action is engaging and exciting. And I'll admit that most of the negatives I thought of after the movie ended. There was very little that distracted me or took me out of it during the film. Anyway, that's my spoiler-free review. Hope you enjoyed it.